You know, one thing that has come up often, I do content on femininity and on elegance and just on women embracing their womanhood and allowing themselves to be beautiful inside and out. And one thing that comes up often is people will ask me, is natural hair feminine? Because society has made it appear that when women wear their hair in a natural texture, that it looks rough, it looks untamed, it looks messy, and a lot of women feel like the only way that they can really look ladylike and feminine is if their hair is straightened or they have on a wig that's straight. And I wanted to know what you think about that. What And it's it's unfortunate that this is even a conversation. Right. It is because it shouldn't be. But yeah. people truly don't feel like they're their most elegant selves when wearing their hair in a natural style. <laughs> Welcome to the Dr. Daff Show. I'm Dr. Daff, and I'm here with a beautiful, special, wonderful guest, Miss Brandy Kikoa. I met Brandy years ago. She is a hairstylist, has her own salon, and has a hairline. And she invited bloggers to come and have a special day for us. That's when I met her, and I fell in love with her personality, her spirit, just everything she represented. And I am so excited to have her here to talk about her journey with hair, talk about her romantic life, which is also very inspiring to me, and whatever else we get into. So welcome, Brandy. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. Like, I really am. Like, we got here early. I know. That is a first for me. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming and for coming from so far. Of course. So you came from Temecula. I did. And that's where your salon is, Bikikoa. Yes. Now, your salon is so unique because it's a natural hair salon. Specifically, I mean, you do other things, but that's something you focus on. Yes. So a lot of salons, a lot of stylists don't focus primarily on caring for one's natural hair. And there's also a very beautiful vibe in your salon. You have a very special aura in there. So Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about BK Koa Studios. I started BK Koa, well, first the name. Um... It means courageous, the brave one, and it's my last name, and that's in um, Keikoa means courageous and brave in Hawaiian. So I thought the name was fitting when I was really getting into um, doing natural hair. So when I started to, or when I got my own salon, it, it wasn't planned. My mom is the one that actually inspired me to get my own place. Wow. And she said, you have to do it. It's it's a, a little studio. You have to do it. And I made all the excuses in the world. Like, mom, I don't know. Like, no. She says, I put the money down on the studio for me. So she put the money down on my studio. And I just, I grew from there. Every year, I expanded and expanded and expanded. And um when I really started getting into natural hair, I was looking at the ingredients in the products. And I'm like, ooh, this looks kind of bad. What does this mean? What is a paraben? And I'm researching things. I'm like, oh my gosh, most of these products out here for us Mm -hmm. have trashy ingredients in it. Why are we using it? So then that's when I started slowly doing my research and getting into my own line, what I want to put in things, how ingredients work, talking to cosmetic chemists. I do have my own cosmetic chemist now that'll tell me, Brandy, no, this isn't good. Don't put that in there, but this is good. So I'm going to mix it up for you and you see how it works. So I have this relationship with an actual chemist that puts ingredients in my products that are good, not just for the hair, but also for the mind, for the body, because she's also an aromatherapist. Mm, Your products are second to none. They are so beautiful to look at. They smell like you're on an island and they work. Thank Your you. products are one of my absolute favorites for natural hair. I mean, we can talk about which all ones. day. We which, what is it. your favorite of all the products? I'll tell you my favorite of your products, but you tell me which one yours is. I have so many. I love them all, but what's near and dear to me is the Be Lola. 
And it's because my mom was involved in the formulation process mm-hmm. of my B-Lola deep conditioner. And Lola is the name of your Yes, the, my, Lola is the name of my late mother. And um, I just sent, my mother unfortunately passed in 2020. But since then, I feel so close to her. Um, every time I use a conditioner, I can feel her spirit. Uh, she came up with the fragrance with my cosmetic chemist. Okay. And when she was smelling things and putting them in the conditioner, my chemist was like, this is interesting because some of the things that she gravitated to, the fragrances, were good for bone health. Really? Immune system. And she passed from bone cancer. The smells that she needed were the things, or that she liked were the things that she actually needed for her body. So it's it's just, it's, it was the whole process was really interesting, and that product is just it's just my jam. That I never I never good. like really super miss her because I feel her all the time when I'm working. Oh, that is so beautiful. That product is one of my favorites. That's is it really? That's that was one of the two I was going to mention. It's yes. the best. The People come in. Is fantastic, Thank and you know you. I have four C hair, so my hair is like on the scale the kinkiest or like the most. I don't even know what you would call it, but the tightest coil, I guess. One of the one of the best textures. <laughs> I, I love working that. with you, the tighter yeah. coiled textures yeah. because it's so versatile and they're so it's so beautiful. It is. But yes. It makes it so silky and soft. I love oh, that. Good. <laughs> it's so great. Thank you. When you started the salon, was it something that you felt that you could do? Because there was a time, there was a shift yes. where A lot of people were doing their own hair due to YouTube. A lot of us naturals started figuring out how to take care of our hair. And we didn't even think to go to a salon because salons usually ruin our hair or complain about it constantly and don't want to do anything with it except for permit. So did you see a shift when it started getting popular on YouTube in terms of your clients coming in? Was there any... Was there anything that you noticed that was different in terms of just how people were seeing their hair? And Yeah, well, I actually, I got busier. (laughs) I got busier. um, It was because I didn't, when people came in to see me, I never talked down to them. I said, this is your journey and it could be our journey. We could do this together. And I tried to encourage my clients to... Um, embrace their curls and their natural. And um, I was just guiding them along the process. So a lot of my clients gravitated to that and they liked it. And they would tell me like, oh, on YouTube, um, someone did this and that and the third. And I'm like, well, you know, I wouldn't do that. But if you want to try it, you know, (laughs) but I never talked down to my clients. It was always like, you know, I want my clients to feel empowered when they leave my space. So I got busier with the whole natural hair movement because I encouraged them to do it. You're right. It. You're right. And a lot of stylists, you know, they would get kind of down talk, like you said, to a lot of people when we have the tighter coiled hair. And I know sure. people personally, even some people in my family who are afraid to go to the salon because they don't want to hear the stylist complaining or telling them that they ruin their hair and, and all the, the negativity yeah. that comes with it. Yeah. And I love that your salon is so serene. It's it's an escape. It's beautiful. It's rela- it's like a yeah. spa. That's what I go for. <laughs> that's what I go for. I want a hair spa. Yes, that's exactly what you feel when you come in there. And oh, you're so kind. That. And you never had this like, I don't want to call it like contention with bloggers. You invited us. Oh, sure. Instead of saying like, oh, well, we're competing because you're on YouTube and you're doing one thing and us stylists really know what we're doing and you don't, <laughs> you know, you embraced us. And I yeah, love that. I truly believe in abundance and a collaboration. And I felt that, you know, when Christina actually came up with the idea, I said, yes. I said, bring them in and let's let them use my products. Let them smell it. Tell me what you think. What it did was it boosted my business because you guys were like, okay, what do you think of this? And then we're just talking. We're having conversations. There's no competition. I'm. You guys are blogging and um, doing your thing and I'm behind the chair. Mm-hmm. So how is, <laughs> I know what I know. I'm, I feel that- um, 
I'm I'm the professional, but you guys also had something to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a great collaborative event. And um, I would actually like to do more in the future. I think that would be wonderful. Yeah. You know, one thing that has come up often, I do content on femininity and on elegance and just on women embracing their womanhood and allowing themselves to be beautiful inside and out. And one thing that comes up often is people will ask me, is natural hair feminine? Because society has made it appear that when women wear their hair in a natural texture, that it looks rough, it looks untamed, it looks messy. And a lot of women feel like the only way that they can really look ladylike and feminine is if their hair is straightened or they have on a wig that's straight. And I wanted to know what you think about that. What And it's it's unfortunate that this is even a conversation. Right. It is because it shouldn't be. But yeah. people truly don't feel like they're their most elegant selves when wearing their hair in a natural style. Oh, that makes me so sad. I know. It does. And then another thing, like, what do you define as feminine? And I think that's the you issue. Know, that's like, the issue. Who? Who's saying these things? <laughs> well, people are saying these things. I'll be what? honest. There are people, there are um, podcasters and YouTubers who do make content saying that. It's not feminine? It's not feminine. And, and that's completely incorrect because being feminine is being ladylike. It's, it's being in your womanhood. Right? Yes. It's showing that compassion and love and caring and beauty and taking care of yourself. Right. But I think maybe what... The people who say it's not feminine are referring to are women who just wake up and walk out and don't put any care into their hair. And I do think that that can be an issue because I do think some people think that just because your hair is in its natural style that you d literally have to do nothing to it. And even if your hair is straight, if you wake up and walk out, it's going to look you have to brush your hair. Like you have to sure. do something to your hair. Sure. So I, I think that there is that. But what do you think about natural hair and femininity? Or what are some ways that they can make it feminine? Yours is super beautiful it's today. Feminine. feminine. It's how it grows out of your head. But really, femininity is how you are. You can have a faded hairstyle. I've had clients that have fades with, with designs, and they are very feminine. Mm -hmm. They are, and they embrace their femininity. So... It just depends on on how you you see or what you consider to be feminine. But if people are saying that, which I think is totally silly, I mean, you can do certain hairstyles to. That's still hard, you know, well, because it's what I consider feminine, but maybe true. not what someone else considers feminine. Like I put a flower in everything. I know. I, <laughs> I, and then that's why when you're like some women just wake up and leave and <laughs> I may be guilty sometimes because I'll fluff and then I'm like, okay, let me put a flower in it and let me do this and put some lipstick on because I but think that as women, we have to give ourselves grace, right? We can't be on a 10 all the time, right. you know, and sometimes you, natural hair is, it could be a lot. And sometimes you wake up and you're like, okay. <laughs> This may not be my day to day. And you put on some lipstick and you put on a flower and some earrings and you bring that back. And you smile. And you smile. So <laughs> it's not just all about your crown. Yeah. It's about your essence and your spirit and how you're feeling. Yeah. And um, that's, that's the best way that I can answer that. You're <laughs> absolutely right, though. But I do think that what you're saying is true, that you could even have a fade or be bald okay. and still be feminine because really it's about your essence. It's about the way you carry yourself. But if you are trying to find ways to make yourself look more ladylike when your hair is, let's say, very short, I mean, there are other techniques like with your clothing you can use. Sure. Like how you have on something that's like a V-neck yeah. and it kind of like highlights your face more. Yeah. Um, you some can earrings, throw some lashes on. Yes. Some heels and you cool. Headbands are supposed. <laughs> There's so many things that you can do. But to answer your question for those of you who ask, because I do get this question 
very often. That's so interesting. It okay. is absolutely feminine to have natural hair. And there yes. are so many natural hairstyles from braids to locks to... Little mohawk puffs, <laughs> that Felicia Leatherwood style mm-hmm. with the, the buns, oh, yeah. the rollouts. Beautiful. I love that. You can even look on like wedding Instagram oh, pages yeah. that yeah. have natural hair for wedding. Yeah. And they have a lot of very like beautiful updos and things. Yeah, like that. for an updo, an updo will last you a week. <laughs> Get a good updo, put that little scarf on. Yes. You know you be good. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about that. And one other thing when it comes to taking care of your natural hair to just Take care of yourself as a woman completely and being your femininity. A lot of it is that time you're taking to wash and condition and deep condition your hair. Sure. And, you know, you have products for us to be able to do that with. But one thing that does come up often in the natural hair world is that the products are too expensive. Yeah. There are too many steps. True. And in order to wear our hair out, it just takes a lot. And I know personally for me... I got to a point where I was spending way too much time. It was taking up my entire Sundays yeah. doing my hair. Yeah. And I needed to find a way to shorten it. So I just stopped doing it, which oh, is not good. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> different, I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> I was scared when I was going to see you. I was like, oh, no. Why I better wear my that? hair out. Because I do not look at your hair. When I'm around town and I see someone, they're like, oh, do I'm like, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> I promise. The the hairstylist hat goes off when I leave. I, I don't even. But give yourself grace with it. Yes. There's a lot of steps I know. If it becomes that tedious... And it becomes all day. Something is very wrong. You're right. And um, I think that it's always good to consult with the professional to minimize the steps. But a good shampoo, conditioner, mm-hmm. deep conditioner, and a leave-in if you don't want to wear it out. You know what's interesting? You have that product, Be Clean, mm-hmm. which is a co-wash. So it's like a shampoo and conditioner. Yes. All in one. Yes. It is phenomenal let's not talk about it because i don't have it right now <laughs> oh no that product is phenomenal okay, stuff I'm gonna, I'm gonna happens you know what i'm saying as a small business owner things happen and things happen with the be clean but i'm working on it y'all it I-, <laughs> I was just gonna say like that product takes care of everything it's and the so best now i still have some so now when i do my hair that's pretty much all i do i use okay. that and i use a leave-in and i just twist it up and put it under my wigs but that's right yeah it made my life so much easier yeah if you get your hair properly hydrated and just twist it up if you're not wanting to deal with it then you're good okay you know um make sure that you're shampooing though a lot of naturalistas they have not been using shampoo y'all got to please shampoo I'm not going to come on here and talk about oils and butters and all that. That's a whole nother story. But please just get the shampoo in there. Make sure that your scalp is clean so that your hair can grow in a clean environment. Thank you for that. Yeah, I I have seen a huge decline in the amount of people who have kept their natural hair. There was like that huge natural hair wave. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people ended up relaxing their hair again. And I think from what I've heard on YouTube especially is that they just said it was too time consuming and their hair wasn't growing and they just felt like they couldn't keep it up anymore so it's not for everybody Mm -hmm. okay it's not for everybody and I'm not gonna sit here and be like oh they should not have done that not everybody can do it everybody's lifestyle is different um one thing I wish people wouldn't go back to is relaxers Mm -hmm. because we know what's in it but why not a silk press you know, because when you get enough silk presses, your heat, your hair becomes heat altered anyway. Oh, I see. So why get the relaxer? You get it done enough, you know, it's, it's going to stay kind of straight. <laughs> that's true. Instead of putting the chemicals in it. Yeah. It'll be more manageable if that's what they're struggling with. Yeah, that's that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not being judgmental. I'm not going to judge. Very I don't rare. <laughs> very rare. <laughs> so, Brandy, I want to talk to you about something that I think is absolutely inspiring for me personally and just to so many people. Okay. And that is your marriage with oh. you and your husband. Yes. So, I am inspired because I have never seen a married couple that just seemed so in love. They're so. They're so supportive of one another. Her husband 
comes from a different culture, which I think is very unique and interesting to me because it influenced, I think, a lot of what Brandy does. But when you see them and you just see what they've produced, like from their children to their hair care line to things that her husband is also doing that's inspiring, it just makes me so happy to know that mm. that kind of partnership and love is out there. Yes. And so we want to know, <laughs> first of all, what's the secret sauce? <laughs> <laughs> you met when you were 12. 12. 12 years old. Wow. Yes. And <laughs> how did you know that he was the one? It's like when you grow up together, I don't think that there was a particular moment where I was like, this guy's the one. Because, I mean, I, I knew him before he had hair on his face, you know? <laughs> You're 12. Yeah, we were babies. I just, I just, it, it just became this thing where we grew up together. We were best friends. Um, as we got older, we just knew that we were going to be together forever. Wow. Because it's like when it's your person, I don't think you have like those moments it's just like a gradual thing. Like you're around each other often. Um, he knows my quirks. I knew his. And I get so sad when he's not around. I think that's when I knew. Like when he wasn't there, I didn't feel complete. So instead of, yeah, that's the one, that's that moment. I will say that when he wasn't around, I, I didn't feel whole. So I guess that's how I knew. Yes. <laughs> that that's that makes sense. That makes sense. This show is sponsored by Better Help Therapy Online. From being a mom to being a boss, being a wife to being a friend, navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure whether it's a career change or a new relationship, becoming a parent or anything that's just new. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user's manual. A therapist that's trained is the next best thing. Therapists are trained to help you figure out your challenging emotions and learn productive skills, which can make therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of a complex engine called you. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% of the time. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% on your first month at betterhelp.com slash feminine. That's betterhelp.com slash feminine. When you got married, what, how old were you? 20. You were 20, so you're a really young married couple. Yes. As you've gotten older, did you ever start to feel like, oh, maybe I probably should have dated other people and had my time out there? Or did you feel like, no, this is this is what I needed or this is, you know. I mean, of course I felt I needed to <laughs> taste a little something else. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to everybody. <laughs> You're like, oh no, he was a one for no, of course. Well, I was like, natural. what the? You're young. I will tell you. So I get okay. I lived in my parents' house, right, and then I get married. So from my parents' house to my husband's house. So I'm in this house with this man. You know, this this boy I grew up with, and I'm thinking I know him, and like. I had this moment where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? What am I doing? Because laundry was just sitting around and my dad spoiled me rotten and did my laundry. So I didn't do laundry at home. Wow. My dad washed my clothes. He ma made my breakfast. <laughs> my mom and dad made my dinner. So I move in with this man and I'm looking and I'm seeing laundry pile up and I'm like, well, when are you going to get to this? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lot of like learning, you know, and um, compromise. And yeah, when we were younger, of course, those arguments get pretty rocky and rough. I believe but that. as you grow, 
you learn. And I was still learning myself. Like, who am I? What do I want? And then I'm learning this other person. Mm -hmm. So as you get older, you're learning to, um, you're learning yourself still. And then you're learning how to pick your battles. Right. And you're both very calm. Like you both have very like mild spirits in the sense that you're not loud or just over the top both of you are that way i'm a little over the top he's the mild you one. can get like that when you want to but he's extremely yeah he's he extremely calm is, he is my calm so how do you deal with conflicts in your marriage that's a good question um as they come i just i i pick my battles because sometimes it's not worth it you know I've been married for 21 years. Wow. So it's like um, you learn to really pick your battles and you learn how to navigate through the seasons of your marriage because we're not always at a 10. Mm -hmm. We're not always happily married. There's some times where I'm like, what? did I do you know? <laughs> and that's okay and that's normal as long as you learn how to navigate through these seasons together you're so right because with the divorce rate being so high I think a lot of times what happens is people do have those thoughts and don't realize that they're normal like yeah I can't believe I married this person in in that moment of anger or frustration sure. and it just that thought just keeps seeping and seeping and seeping and you have to it, that can't keep seeping and it can't no it can't and understand that this is a situation but that's what you're doing you're growing together and you're learning together absolutely and it's so fun it is fun it's, we're in the <laughs> we're in the stage in our marriage where our kids are older mm -hmm. um we have a 17 year old and a 13 year old so they're kind of doing their thing a little bit my daughter's driving and we're like Okay, so what do we do? We have fun. Yes. You know, and it's, you know, but it's not always like that. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm just navigate through those seasons, embrace them and talk to each other and communicate mm -hmm. all the time. When you stop communicating and losing each other, that's when you get into trouble. You're still right about that. Communication is key. Now, in terms of your marriage, you said that you have a lot of fun and I can tell you have a lot of fun together mm -hmm. just from your Instagram videos. I'm yeah. like, wow, <laughs> their house must just be lit all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> but as a married couple, that's something that actually is one of the factors that cause a lot of married couples to end up divorcing is that they don't spend like recreational time together. They don't do things as a couple. Yes. What is it that you do together? What are some things that you do as a couple that help to keep you together and not in your own separate lives? We're really good at seeing each other. You know, um, we like to date. We like to date. We know like when things feel like we're, we're not connecting, we'll go on a date okay. and we'll talk. Or he'll be like, let's go to Palm Springs for the weekend. And we'll go to Palm Springs for a weekend. Um, he's really good at being romantic. I'll just get flowers one day. Or I'll, um, same for him, I'll try to send a text or try to give him a compliment. Because men need to hear it too. Like, you look nice, honey. You know, like, <laughs> it's so hard for us. I mean, I'm going to speak for me, but I know I'll just say for black women. <laughs> we don't usually say, oh, honey, you look nice. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes have to push myself to tell my husband, like, you look handsome mm, today. You smell good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Without the eye roll. <laughs> but actually, like, mean it because they want to feel good, too. So it's like a give. You know, you have to give and take. And it can't be one side just giving all the time. It's not fair. That's true. And when you learn to balance things out, they'll work beautifully like a dance. We always say marriage is like a dance. And a lot of times you'll hear like maybe other people complimenting him and that kind of thing. And if you're someone who never does it, it may be a lot more like sharp to you. Like someone tells him, wow, you look really nice. And you're looking at like, oh. Right. <laughs> but you never say it or you never, you think I don't have to do it because he already knows. 
I married him. He knows I think he looks nice, right? You yeah. Know? But you do have to. You have to. They have to hear it. And yeah, because, you know, they want their little ego stroke. Like, you look good, babe. <laughs> <laughs> they, they want that. They won't tell you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they'll act out. Yeah. Sometimes they'll act out and you're trying to figure out what's going on when really you need to just give them a hug. I kiss him on the cheek. Hey, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, The men, they can be, they're not too complex like us. It's true. So sometimes the simplest thing, you know, a neck rub or kiss on the cheek or a compliment can just make their day. I think touch is really significant when it comes to relationships. Like, I think people don't realize how powerful it is just to touch him. Mm-hmm. Just that physical feeling of touch can do wonders. A lot of times we get to a place where couples are not even touching. Everything has just become so mechanical and you forget that intimacy is necessary just to keep that romance going. And- Absolutely. It's it's vital. It's important. You need to keep that. You need to keep that eye contact. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to do those texts like, how was your day? You know, you have to or else it's so easy to lose each other. And that's why when I see marriages in trouble, it just breaks my heart. You know, and my husband, you know, um, he's a kumu, which is like a Hawaiian minister. And he does retreats and things like that. So, you know, he got to keep things good. That's right. If, he, <laughs> if he's a... Uh... Marrying people. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, before he was even doing that, he just, he practices everything he preaches. And, you know, I go right along with him. So he conducts ceremonies, but he also had his first marriage retreat, right? Yes. What was that like? Oh, it was so fun. It was uh, three couples that we had Mm -hmm. and... Um, at first, I, I'm not going to even lie. It was hard for me to let him do his thing. Okay. Why? I, because, like, I'm kind of a control freak, okay. but not really. But yes, I am. And I, some of the couples were my friends that I knew. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, what are you doing now? Like, how is that going to work? You know, and I'm looking over and just trying to micromanage too much when really this was his thing. This was his retreat. So I made an account accountability post and I put it on my Instagram and I said, listen, guys, it's all Koa. I'm not going to, I'm not going to intrude. I'm not going to do it. It's all him. So it was a learning lesson for me to, to actually have to sit back Mm -hmm. and allow my husband to lead. Mm. And I didn't realize that I had that challenge. Oh, wow. This whole time in your life, All you didn't, this you didn't time. realize that you had that challenge. No, because I think because maybe he was letting me get away with because, it. I don't know. Because he's so <laughs> chill. Yeah. And I don't think a whole lot bothers him. Right. But, and you're always, you know, you're always doing something. Always. And he's super supportive. He's always there. And I, I think he just doesn't think it's necessary to, like, upset you. Right. But, Yes. But he's also so content in himself, yes. I think, as a person. You know him so well. I, I've, I've watched him for years. <laughs> yes, but I had to take a step back. And he did it, girl. We had sound bowls, yoga. Um, it was at a beautiful resort in Palm Springs. Um, when I say my baby led, he led. Wow. And I let him lead. And I was like, okay. And it was actually kind of hot. I was like, okay, I can see. <laughs> I can just let you leave, you know. <laughs> this is nice. This is a change. Wow. So it went so well. The couples had a great time. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end, he did a ceremony for all of the couples, like to um, read the a rededication. A, yeah, unity ceremony is what he called it, okay. and um, just to fall in love all over again and see your person and. You know, just and he did um, incorporated some things from his culture into the ceremony, okay. and it was beautiful. Wow, I think that is so important for couples to do things like go on marriage retreats. Yeah, that kind of stuff is not necessarily talked about as often in the church. It's talked about usually. A lot of churches have a marriage or couples retreat at sure. some point during the year, but I don't think people notice how necessary something like that is. Like you're saying, you're. You're traveling, you're falling in love again. 
Maybe yeah. they think it's just going to be like a bunch of like lectures and workshops. About no, like- it, it it wasn't. It, he made a he created a beautiful workbook for them. Mm. One that I one of the things I liked in particular was the scratch offs that he made. Mm-hmm. Um, you can scratch off something, and it says the dollar amount before you scratch it off. Okay. But it's a date. It's like a a type of date that you can go on. And the ones that have all the dollar signs, it's you know you're going to spend money. Uh-huh. But if you scratch it off, it's like a weekend somewhere. Or, you know, um, or it can be, you know, have have dinner together and watch a movie or go to the movies. It's just really cool. Like the whole thing, it wasn't work. Mm-hmm. And another thing, yeah, a lot of marriage uh, workshops are based in the church, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is great. But there's a lot of people that don't, attend church exactly so you're missing a huge yeah. chunk of people absolutely that are not getting any of this absolutely and um he actually he got people in there that that don't really attend churches because mm. i mean and marriage marriage is one of those things that is is sacred and you know some people feel that you know they want to keep their their marriage that's why we call it sacred sacred space time. They feel that they want to keep their marriage sacred, but they don't really want to involve too much of a church. I know what you're saying. Yeah. So um, what he had to offer was a little bit different and people really liked it. That's great. No, that's super inspiring. Yeah. A lot of people who are single and are looking to find, like you said, their person, they feel discouraged that maybe it's not out there and a lot of times don't necessarily know what's important to look for. What would you say, especially since you got married so young, as you've watched your marriage develop, what are some things that you believe are very important to look for in your spouse? And what would you say to someone who is discouraged about ever finding love? Don't be discouraged. Because, I mean, there's there's somebody for everybody out there. Um, that's an interesting question because women now are getting married older than before. When I was younger, girls were getting married, 18 or they're getting married. Mm. Um, so what I would say to look for is to what you don't like. You know, <laughs> I think that if you see what you don't like in a person, it would be easier to narrow down what you really like. Okay. Because it's just one of those things like, oh, I can't stand that he does that. So I can't. That's a, a no for me. Mm-hmm. So figure out your no's and then write down some of your yeses. And then do the no's outweigh the yeses. You know, so it just, you know, are you guys both spiritually yoked? Are you financially, you know, you look at those things and and what are the deal breakers? (laughs) (laughs) But I do believe that there's somebody for everybody. And sometimes like with my clients, I've encouraged them to step outside of the box because they'll say, oh, I normally will date this type of man. Okay. And I'm like, well, why don't you try this type of man? You know, it's... I I did. Well, it was with me, it was different. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up in an area where it was not very diverse. Okay. Did have a lot of options in that way. Mm-mm. It did not. And um, I saw something brown and beautiful and I was like, ooh, jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I just, I think that it's important to um, be open be open to different things and just have fun. Don't be so serious and stoic all the time. Just just be- have fun. Because by you being open, it births so much, not just your lovely marriage, but your brand. I yeah. mean, your brand is so unique in, in that way because, yeah. yes, you are a black woman, but there's so much of the Hawaiian culture yeah intertwine in all of your products in your salon yeah and it it's just so beautiful the way that the two of you came together and created so much for the world thank you he is my biggest cheerleader he really is um when I came out with my brand he was right there Mm -hmm. you know and I tried and I still do include him in 
everything that I'm doing, like with the business, so that he doesn't feel left out. Right. I know that some women who are business owners, they struggle with that, where their partner doesn't feel like they fit, or maybe they want their partner to be doing like the business stuff, but that's not who he is. Mm -hmm. He may would rather support you by making you dinner or by taking care of your dry cleaning or doing other things to make your life a little bit easier, but maybe he can't be fully in the business side of things. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's important for women to choose people who are aligned in that sense? Or do you think it's okay to be completely different? Because as a business owner, your business is a huge part of your life. Yeah, that's that's tough. It is tough. That is tough mm -hmm. because if he wasn't so involved, we would start to sway. Mm -hmm. We would start to disconnect. I think that it's very important to have your partner as much as involved as possible um, so that when wins happen, you can celebrate them at the same level. That's true. You know, um, when I get a win, he is so excited. As if it, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, when we got one of our first orders online, he was there and it was like, oh my gosh, yes, yes. And we're packing orders and it was so fun. Mm -hmm. I just, I think that it's really important for your spouse to be somewhat involved okay. for things to, and I'm not saying that it can't work. I'm saying that I think it would flow better. And it's a lot less challenging and you won't have that like resentment some people end up having. Yeah. Even, like their husband is not involved or knowledgeable. And make it fun for them. Don't be putting them, uh, making them do the business stuff and the numbers if that's not what they want to do. You know, like have them do other things too. Like, honey, you know, I'm going to check this thing out. Look, look at this packaging. What do you think of this? Whatever you think that they may be interested in. Right. You know, always kind of put them in the back of your mind with your business and, and the creative process because that's the fun part. That is so true. So what would you say in your opinion would be some advice that you could give to someone who needs that fire back in their marriage. Because you recently renewed your vows with your husband. Yeah, we've done it twice. You've done it twice? Yes, we did it 10 years and we did it 20. Oh, the ceremony was so <laughs> beautiful. I was there. It was so beautiful. <laughs> what would you say to a couple who is struggling to get that fire in their marriage? They feel like it's just dry and they just don't have that passion anymore for being married what would oh, you say not dry goodness we don't let it get dry <laughs> um <laughs> it's there's little things that you can do mm -hmm. um it's uh, go to dinner have a date that's you know what usually what people say but like sometimes like change your hair mm -hmm. wear something sexy yes you know um Go to a bar and act like you don't know each other. Why yeah. not? Yeah. You know, that's fun. Like, put the fun back into it. And just go back to the the beginning and when you guys first started dating. Like, what was it you really liked? Mm -hmm. You know, what gave you the butterflies? What made you be like, okay, that's my boo. You know, go back to those times. Take out a, a picture album and look at pictures. Like, you remember that one time? Memories, I think, really spark things up. Like, oh, yeah, I remember you made me feel that way. Because when you look at the picture, then there's the feeling. And then it's just, it's kind of like, okay, how can we replay this feeling? I like that. That's that's good. Yeah. That does make a difference. And you said also like your appearance. I know for me, that's so important. I didn't realize how important it was until after having the baby. I obviously needed time to be able to heal and recover. Sure. But then it got to a point where I was starting to get a little too comfortable in the place that I was and I needed to not only kind of get my energy back up and start working out and just looking nice for him, but also for myself. And I realized that part of that weight loss process for me really did impact the way that I showed up mm. in my marriage in mm -hmm. terms of my confidence, in terms of what I wanted to wear. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to look sexy if I don't feel sexy. Right? Mm -hmm. So you 
did a huge transformation. Well, it's not, it wasn't a huge transformation, but you yeah. did lose a significant amount of weight. I did. And what inspired that and how did it affect you? I did life? it. I did it for me, first okay. of all. You always have to do these things for you. I mean, for and then if he's a bonus, like oh, how he's going to look at you and <laughs> that's just the bonus. But you do those things for yourself. I just, I became more mindful over what I put on the tip of my fork. Okay. And that made a world of difference. It was very gradual because after I had my son, I was like 300 pounds straight up. Mm -hmm. And I slowly, I was like, okay, this is, this is. <laughs> you get to a point, right? Where you're like, <laughs> okay. And you know, my husband who adores me, mm -hmm. I was the sexiest thing. You know what I'm saying? I <laughs> mean, at that size. It did look great. <laughs> I didn't even notice until you lost the weight that there could even be like another level because I thought Girl. you were already so beautiful. Like I, I agree with him. I had to get that <laughs> stuff off. Um, and after I got the weight off, I was like, you know what? I needed a breast reduction because okay. this was too much weight to carry. Okay. And you know, after that, I slowly just started doing little things. And then as I started doing little things, mm -hmm. he started doing little things and he lost a hundred pounds. Wow. He did. Wow. He did just by like little, like, let's not eat the burger tonight. Maybe we should have a salad. <laughs> Oh, that's a drastic difference. But just little, <laughs> but just little things throughout a number of years. Okay. It wasn't like Okay. You know, and when you start putting good things in your body, then your mind gets stronger. And sharper. And sharp. Mm -hmm. And when your mind gets strong and sharp, you really start feeling yourself. And then the confidence comes and you just become a better mother, a better friend. I became a better wife. You know, it's just a, a all around good feeling when you watch what you put on the tip of your fork. Wow, you look amazing, and Thank that's you. great that you did that. I'm super, super inspired by that. And both of you, you did wonderful. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> did good. <laughs> Yay! So, Brandy, you know that I have my fragrance line, yes. Line Forever, and you are so, so supportive, and I know you purchased our debut I fragrance. I did. I love it. 2911. Do you love it? I loved it. Really? It's gone. It's gone? <laughs> I'm no, gonna send, I used it. I'm going to send you a new one. It's good stuff. <laughs> I like it. It's very soft. Um, it reminds me. It reminds me of my childhood because I remember like notes and those fragrances, like smelling different notes mm -hmm. when I was younger. And I didn't know who wore it okay. or where they came from. But I was like, oh, I remember that smell. Wow. Yeah, it is really, really I know nice. you love fragrance because you had the cause you had a chemist that was Yeah, you met her. She's met the same her. one that does oh, my products. Yes. Okay. And I when I came to your salon, we created perfume yes. from scratch with her and I yes. created the scent and it smelled so amazing, but mm -hmm. I didn't write down what I put in it. Darn. I know. <laughs> I love that fragrance that we created. So yeah. I know you love you love scents. I your do. Your stuff smells so good. So I wanted to share our newest launch with you. <laughs> it's from our Faith Collection, and I wanted to have Ooh, you look at the packaging, girl. You know I'm all about the packaging. I know. <laughs> Silent Storm and Mustard Seed. Yes, yeah, Silent Storm and Mustard Seed. Tell me about the name. Both of them are created to help to just remind you to have faith it's okay. an inspiration for you whether you're just looking at the fragrance in your room or you're actually spraying it okay it's a reminder to have faith in the promises of god mm. and a silent storm is to remind you that in the middle of a storm that god can silence it you know i know that's right that's right right <laughs> i know that's right yes and for mustard seed it's to remind you to have even the tiniest bit of faith, even the, the smallest bit of faith as a mustard seed is so tiny. Mm. It can do great things. You mm. can do great things with just a little bit of faith. And it's based off of a scripture. I that love talks that. About that. I yes. love that. See, you're going to make me all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the pack. Can we talk about this? 
uh, can we be in Nordstrom? <laughs> well, let me try and get this stuff out. Okay, so let me help you with that. Y'all are, <laughs> are serious day. about it being in. I want to make sure it doesn't spell. So this one is Silent Storm. Okay. Mm. that's nice <laughs> i feel like this is like these are in the realm of like what your hair products could possibly gosh be. that's really <laughs> nice it's soft mm -hmm. what notes so this one has coconut milk in it it has sea salt in it mm -hmm. it has ylang ylang Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at you! So this one is called the Silent Storm. Yes, this one's more bright. Where's my my uh, coffee beans? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I need some coffee beans. Ooh, okay. I really <laughs> like this one because you know I like fruity. Yes, you do. I like this. This could definitely go in, like, the hair. Mm -hmm. Yes, I really like that one. So oh, great. this is not. Do I get to keep yes, this? Yes, for you, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, I don't want to be like nice, but I really like this one, the mustard seed. I'm so happy you like it. Oh, yes, yeah, it's girl. So it's bright like you. Yes. Because you're, you're so bright. Like, you have to wear something that shows up like you too you see how i lit up oh, yes. yes is it available for order it is it is and i will send you another 2911 how is he <laughs> with your business oh he is phenomenal he's the machine behind everything is honestly. he he literally is the machine behind every single thing like, okay and i mean everything the only thing that i really can take credit for is like the sense and the name but like the actual production and all the vendors and the, the packaging and everything. You're he is, kidding. Josh is, I'm telling you, like I couldn't have picked him myself. Like he was all God because. Really? He, <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> he's fantastic. No, he wow. is. He really puts everything into like everything he does. I mean, it's like all soft and velvet. Like I want to pet it. Oh, he's the one that came up with the design. All of oh, that. Good job, good job. <laughs> right on. Oh, yes. I'm so happy you like it. Thank you. No, so I love much. it, and I love every single thing that you do and that you stand for. You're such an inspiration in so many ways, and I would love for you to just tell whoever it is out there that's struggling and believing in your dreams, for starting something of your own, having a love and a life partner. What is it that you can tell our girls who are discouraged and just don't think that they could ever be the woman that they really see themselves as being? Don't get discouraged because you are already. Okay, You're worthy of everything that I have. You're worthy of everything that Michelle has. And you tell yourself that every day. Take chances. Take risks. And it's going to all come together. But you have to believe it. You have to believe it. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. I love you so much. I, I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> Where can they find you, Brandy? Um, everywhere. So on Instagram, it's BKKOA, B-E-K-E-K-O-A. You can hit me up on my personal, Brandy K Koa. That's where all the fun stuff is, the party. <laughs> and but, visit her salon. Yeah, come visit me in yes. Temecula. Yeah. We should do another daycation. That would be so amazing. Yeah. Bring the baby. I want to see the baby. <laughs> I'll bring him. <laughs> if you want to get your natural hair taken care of and just relax and have a great spa day, definitely visit Brandy. And if you want to get your hair colored, you colored my hair and it was oh, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, I'll hook it up. For you sure. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.